All right, welcome back to the last lesson in this chapter. We're going to be looking at the rational exponents, uh, so fractions. Uh, okay, so, but we're going to start with some reviewing. Okay, so here are some of the rules that we learned um, this year and last year. So I want you to match them, okay? And then once you finish those, there are also questions down here. Um, actually, you probably can't see the full screen. So I'll, I'll go one at a time, okay? Here we go. Try to match them first, okay? Okay, number one, a to the m times a to the n, you're supposed to add exponents because you're multiplying power with the same base, so you add exponents. Anything to the power of zero is equal to one, okay, so that's that. Um, a to the m to the, uh, divided by a, a to the n, so this is dividing powers with the same base, so you need to subtract the exponents. a to the one is just a, right, that's just the base itself. One over a to the n, so remember this one is when you can convert the negative exponent into positive exponent, okay? So by simply flipping the uh, fraction, right? Because remember, this is the same thing as a over one to the negative n. So you can flip it over and you get one over a to the n, okay? b to the m over a to the n. So similarly, that's gonna be matching up with f. Okay, again, you can see the negative exponent becomes positive when you move the numerator to the denominator and vice versa, right? Denominator to the numerator. Okay, seven, a to the m to the n, so that's the power of a power. When you have that case, you're gonna multiply the exponents, so a to the m o, uh, mn. Eight, a to the n over b to the n. This is a quotient property, right? You can combine them into one single fraction. That is just gonna be a over b to the power of n. And finally, that's the multiplication property. Uh, a to the n times b to the n is the same thing as a times b all to the power of n. Okay, so these are some of the rules we learned. Um, okay, now you, let's see if you can apply them here. Okay, let's try to simplify these. And for number one, you should evaluate it, right? meaning that you should get a number for the answer. For three, four, and, uh, sorry, two, three, and four, you are end up with you're gonna end up with an expression. Okay, so give that a try. But keep in mind, always, always keep the exponent positive. Okay. Okay, so for number one, you're multiplying powers with the same base. So you simply keep the power, uh, sorry, keep the base and you add exponents. So that's four plus negative three plus one. That's negative three over five. Four minus so four plus negative three is four minus three, which is one. One plus one is two. And now if you expand this, negative three squared is nine, five squared is 25, so that's number one. For number two, you gotta keep in mind, you have to expand this, you know, you gotta, this is power of a power situation, you gotta multiply the two to every single exponent, okay? Now be really careful, there's a negative three as the exponent for three, but this exponent is only for three, not for one, okay? So what's gonna happen is we're gonna square the negative sign first. The square of a negative sign becomes a positive sign because we know negative times negative is positive. And now we're gonna apply the square into this power, three to the power of three. So that's gonna end up with three to the, you know what, so I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna have a negative sign, which is just, I'm not even gonna write negative. Uh, yeah, sure, I'll just write as negative one, okay, squared. And then we have three to the power of negative six because you multiply the exponent. You multiply the negative two with a two and you multiply the one for the b, right? Because remember, if it's not written, it's a one, so b squared. And now we know negative one squared is just positive. We are gonna move all the negative exponents to the denominator by keeping the positive exponent where it is, okay? So b squared was positive, the exponent was positive, so we're gonna keep it in the numerator. 3 to the power of 6 is going to move to the denominator, and a to the 4 is going to move to the denominator. Now, 3 to the power of 6, let's actually evaluate that. 3 to the power of 6 is 729. a to the 4. Okay, there you go, that's your answer. Okay, for number 3, you simply just subtract the exponents because you're dividing them. So this is going to be negative 5 minus negative 2, which is going to be y to the power of negative 3, right? Because you're subtracting exponents, so you just... Well, subtracting a negative becomes a plus, so negative five plus two. And because it's a negative exponent, you're gonna move it to the denominator. Okay, number four, by far the longest one here. Let's see if we can handle this, okay? So similarly, okay, I'm just gonna apply 
I mean, it's not harder, it's just longer, okay? I'm just gonna apply the exponent to every single term inside, so that's three squared, a to the negative four, b to the six. So again, I simply multiply the exponents by two and keeping the base the same, times, this is gonna be three to the negative one, right? And again, applying this negative one as the exponent into everything inside, and that's negative one times negative one, so that's one, that's negative four times negative one, that's a four. Then for the denominator, same thing, now it's gonna be three to the negative three, I'm just multiplying, okay, so recall, it's three to the one, right? Three to the one, three to the one, that's why it's negative three there, because one times negative three. A to the negative six, two times negative three is negative six, and b is gonna be positive six, because negative two times negative three is six. Now I'm gonna simplify what's on the top first, okay? I'm just gonna combine them, because this is a multiplication between these two set of brackets, okay? So again, I'm gonna multiply, 3 squared with 3 to the negative 1 because they have the same base. So that's going to be 3 to the 1. Again, because we're multiplying power, so we add exponent. That's a to the negative 4 times a to the 1. That's going to be a to the negative 3. Negative 4 plus 1 is negative 3. b to the power of 10 because that's 6 plus 4. We still have 3 to the negative 3, a to the negative 6, b to the 6. Now we're going to subtract exponents when we divide the powers with the same base, so that's three and three, right, same base, so I'm gonna subtract the exponents, one minus negative three is a four, negative three minus negative six is now positive, oh sorry, a, positive three. Again, negative three minus negative six means plus six. So negative three plus six is a three, 10 minus six is a four. Finally, I'm gonna evaluate this, three to the four is 81, we still have a cube and we still have b to the four and that is your final answer for number four. Okay, so hopefully these are just the uh, review questions. Again, number four is a little bit longer, uh, but again, we learned all these in the previous sections, okay? Now we're gonna move on to the actual lessons today. We are gonna be looking at the rational exponents. Okay, there's a part one here. Rational exponents, again, meaning that the exponent is a fraction. Okay, we have a to the power of 1 over n. And it says this is the same thing as the nth root of a. So we are going to look at this example here. We have considered the following. We have root 2 times root 2, and that is equal to 2. Okay, because that's the same thing as square root of 2 squared. And we said earlier on the previous lesson, when you take the square root and then you square it, or if you square it and then take the square root, you're just taking one step forward and backward, or one backward and one forward, right? So then it remains the same thing. That's why it's a two here. Which means uh, this is, I mean, and I mean, if you consider this, two to the power one half times two to the power of one half, this simply means, again, that's multiplying powers with the same base. So you're adding exponents together. We know one half plus one half is just one. So then we end up with two to the power of one, which is just two. So you see the parallel here? This is root two times root two, it gives you a two. Two to the one half times two to the one half is also two. So, I mean, the reason why of this happening is because root two is simply two to the power of one half, okay? Now, where does this two come from? Remember, the index is a two if you don't write it, right? So that's why square root of two is just two to the power of one half. Okay, now if we're gonna come, so let's practice, right? So let's see, how do we write this as a power? Okay, so this is a radical with a radicand of two with the index of four. So we can rewrite this, again, recall, if you look at this, right, the rule, the index is just the denominator. So that's one over four. Okay, so that is just two to the power of one over four. Okay. Part B, we have two of them, but that's okay. We just need to do both of them, okay? So square root of two, we've seen that already. That's two to the power of one half. Fourth root of two, we've seen that already. That's just two to the power of one over four. Again, one over four because the index is a four, so the denominator is four. Now here, we have a multiplication of powers of the same base. So we can actually apply more rules, right? When we multiply power of the same base, we add exponents. So that's one half plus one quarter. Now, we, when we add fractions, we must have common denominators. So I'm turning one half into two over four, and one over four remains one over four, so this is then becomes two to the power of three over four. So you can, that's how you write that as one single power. 
Okay, now we're gonna go backwards. We're gonna write this as a radical, okay, from the power form. You can see that's a power. We want to write this as a radical. Well, again, the denominator is seven, and recall that is just our index. And the base is our radical. So phi to the power of one over seven is just the seventh root of five. Similarly, for AB to the power of one over three, now notice how A, B are in brackets, which means that both A and B are gonna be inside the radical sign, okay? The exponent is one over three, so the index is a three. So that is just the cube root of AB. Now, here's the problem though, right? For a fraction, the numerator is not always gonna be one, right? That it's, that's just not the case, right? Sometimes it's a two, sometimes a five, right? It just, it might be a different number. It just might be a different number. So how do we deal with that? Well, luckily we also have a rule for that, right? It turns out the numerator m is actually just the exponent of the base. Okay, you notice how the denominator n continues to be the index, of course, that doesn't change, but the numerator is just the exponent of the base. However, you can also rewrite this as, um, and typically, actually, this is more how we write it. So, uh, not, not more, but when we evaluate, this is probably better, okay? you actually put the exponent m outside of the bracket for the entire radical. Okay, the reason why we do this is because if you raise to the power of m first, you're making the numbers bigger. And then you're taking the root of a larger number is harder to do, right? Rather, if you take the root of a base, you know, typically speaking, without the power, it's gonna be a smaller number, and then you raise to some whole number exponent, then, you know, you're at least expanding from a smaller base. Okay, so typically speaking, when you try to evaluate, that's the way you wanted to write it as, but both are correct, okay? So consider the following, okay, and I'll show you why we want to write this, you know, the way it is, like, not, not the way this is written, but we want to write this, okay? I'll show you this example here. Okay, notice how 8 to the power of 4 over 3, again, this is the same thing as, because, I mean, this is the same thing as 8 to the 1 over 3 times 4, right, or 8... Well, a to the one over three to the power of four, because when we have power of power, we can multiply exponents. And when you multiply one third with the four, you get four thirds. So this is the same thing as the cube root of eight to the power of four, right? And that's exactly what we have there. And then cube root of eight is just two, so that's two to the power of four or 16. Now, if you write it in this form, then you can see that's eight to the power of four over three, which is the same thing as a to the power of four to the power of one over three, right? Again, that is because when you multiply these two exponents together, you get exactly four over three. Now this means you are taking the cube root because the, right, the exponent is one over three. So from the previous row, we know three is the index. So that's the cube root of eight to the power of four. And if you evaluate eight to the power of four, first of all, that's hard to do, but it turns out to be 40, 96. And now we need to take the cube root of that. Oh, that's hard. That's just big numbers, right? This is big numbers after another big number. But I mean, if we use the calculator, you get 16. But notice how this is much, much easier, right? Much manageable, much more manageable to do than this. You want to deal with small numbers rather than big numbers. Okay, so that's the rule. Let's take a look at some examples here. Four to the power of 1.5. You might be like, oh, okay. Uh, I thought we were talking about fraction, right? Rational exponents. Well, 1.5 is also a rational number. But how do we deal with 1.5? Well, we can write 1.5 as a fraction, right? Recall 1.5 is simply just three over two. So four to the 1.5 is the same thing as four to the power of three over two. And if you want to evaluate this, this is simply, again, the square root of four and then cube it. We know the square root of four is just two and two cubed is just eight. And there you go, four to the power of 1.5 is eight. Okay, uh, for part B, if you want to evaluate this, well, first of all, let's actually convert this into the uh, radical form, uh, sorry, power form, okay? I want to do that, and then before we evaluate, okay? Uh, if you want to convert this into uh, uh, power form, this is simply going to be 32 to the power of, okay, so now you can see the exponent is a 4, so that goes to the numerator. The index is 5, so that goes to the, the, to the denominator, okay? So these two are equivalent. Okay, they are equivalent. Now, if you want to evaluate this, well, the fifth root of 32 is going to be a 2, and 2 to the power of 4 is now 16, and that's 
is what that is about. Okay, so that is that. So again, if we want to evaluate, that's what you get. If you want to turn into a power form, that's what you get. Okay, so this is the power form. Okay, for C, if you want to evaluate this, you have to turn into radical form first. Okay, you have to, just like this. When we want to evaluate this, you have to turn into radical form. So how do we turn this into radical form? Well, first of all, I noticed, noticed the negative uh, exponent. So first of all, I'm going to turn this into a fraction. Okay, so 1 over 16 to the power of 3 over 4. Now, 3 over 4 is a fraction, right? So we can turn this into a radical. 16 is the base or the radicand. In, now, once you turn it into a radical, the denominator is 4, so it's a fourth root, and I'm going to cube that. Okay, now the cube, the fourth root of 16 is a 2, and we have a 2 cube, so this is 1 out of 8. Okay, so that's what that is. Okay, if you want to evaluate this, that's what you get, and this is how you turn it into a radical, radical form right here. Okay, so there are two questions for you to try. Uh, part A is a little tricky, so give it a try though, okay? Good luck. Okay, so the reason why I say it's tricky is because recall earlier, this exponent is only for 32, not for the negative sign, okay? So first of all, we should turn this into uh, a fraction because I see the negative exponent. So I'm gonna have, write this as negative one over 32 to the power of four over five. Okay, 32 to the power of 4 over 5. Now, this then can be rewritten as a radical, right? 32 is the base, therefore that's the radicand. Index is a 5 because the denominator is a 5 and raised to the power of 4. Now, we did this earlier right here. Okay, so I'm not going to show you one more time. So, I'll just write it down as the result. One over, negative 1 over 16. Okay, again, fifth root of 32 is a 2 and 2 to the power of 4 is 16. That's how you get that. Okay, similarly for part B, again, I see negative exponents, so I'm going to write this as 1 over 216 right away to the power of 2 over 3. Now I need to write this as a radical. So 216 is our base, therefore that's our radicand. Index is a 3 because that's our denominator and squared because that's our numerator. The cube root of 216 is going to be a 6 and then uh, we still have the squared, so that's 1 out of 36. Okay, so that's that. Okay, uh, hopefully you are okay with that. Um, there are more questions for you to try. Okay, so there are three here first for you to do. Always, always keep in mind, always, always leave it as a positive exponent if you, uh, when you try to leave it as a power, okay? Now for A and B though, you should evaluate them, okay? Because they are well, you can evaluate them, right? So you should simplify by evaluating them. For part C, though, uh, you just leave them as the uh, power form because you can't evaluate that, okay? So give that a try. Okay, part A, multiplying power, so you add exponents, negative 2 over 3 plus negative 1 over 3. This is going to be a to the negative 3 over 3, which is a to the negative 1, negative exponent, Move it to the denominator. Oh, sorry. What am I saying? A. My gosh, that's a five. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. My eyes. Holy. Okay, that is way off. A and five. How did I mix mixed up A with a five? That's crazy. Anyways, five to the power of negative one is just one over five. Okay. Uh, part B. I see negative expo exponents, so right away I'm going to flip the fraction. So 81 over, 60, 81 over 64 is now going to be 64 over 81. And I'm going to keep the exponent positive now, okay, because I flipped the fraction. So then I am going to fourth root 64 over 81 and then cube it, okay. Now the fourth root of 64 is... Nothing. Oh my goodness. Is this a typo? I cannot do the 4 through 61, can I? No, I can't. That's nothing. Shoot. Okay, well, in that case, there's nothing you can do about that. Um, oh, man. Okay, 
I'm going to change the question because this is not what I wanted. Okay, let me change it to 16. Oh, boy. Okay, 16. So then this is going to be 16 over 81 to the power of 3 over 4. And therefore, this is the fourth root of 16 over 81 cubed. This is a big fail on YouTube. It's sad. That's okay. I'm not going to re refilm it. It's whatever. Okay, the fourth root of 16 is a 2. The fourth root of 81 is a 3. And now we're going to cube this. 2 cubed is 8. 3 cubed is 27. And there you go. 8 out of 27. How did I not catch that mistake earlier, though, when I made the uh, worksheet? Ah, whatever. Okay, finally, part C, this one, we just need to expand. Um, this is going to be x to the power of, well, 4 times 4 over 3 is going to be 16 over 3, right? 4 times 4 over 3. 4 is the same thing as 4 over 1, so 16 over 3. And y is going to be 1 half times 4 over 3. Divide that by 2, divide that by 2, so that's going to be 2 over 3. So that's just going to be y to the power of 2 over 3. And that's it. You do not need to write this as a radical. Okay, you do not need to. Okay, you just leave it like that. Okay, uh, we have two last examples for you uh, for us to try to finish. Uh, you should be able to do part A. Uh, hopefully, you can do part B as well. Okay, so give them a try. Okay, part A. Um, here we have again. You should not square the 27 first because that's going to be a large number. What you should have done, I mean, you could. It's nothing wrong with that, I suppose, but it's just much harder to do, right? You want to square at the end because the cube root of 27 is just a 3. 3 squared is just a 9, right? Nice and simple. Whereas part B, if you want to simplify this, you actually need to convert this into power form first, okay? So this will be B to the power of 3 over 9. Okay, again, the Exponent is the numerator, the index becomes the denominator. Now we know 3 over 9 can be reduced to 1 over 3. And therefore now we can write this as a radical, just cube root of b. Okay, much simpler than the ninth root of q, uh, b cubed. Okay, uh, that is all for this lesson. And actually, that's all for this chapter. Let's see if you have any questions. Uh, if you do, let me know. Um, otherwise, try practice questions. Good luck.